Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on LP WAN, which is actually stands for Low Power Wide Area Network. For this video, I'm going to discuss the past of LP WAN. I'm also giving you a situation. What is the current LP WAN players? I'm also going to put on a glass to see the future of LP WAN. So this will be the objective of this video. We are going to study the past, the present, and also the future of LP WAN. This will be the part six series discussion on LP WAN. If you're keen to know more about LP WAN, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will find a series of discussion on LP WAN. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's go through the history of LP WAN. For example, cellular, we have 2G, we have 3G, LTE, which is also sometimes known as 4G, and also 5G. In Singapore, we don't have 2G anymore. 3G will stop somewhere in the middle of the year 2024. We have left LTE and also 5G. However, these two are very expensive for IoT application. Okay, imagine... I need to pay cellular service for myself, my wife, and my three sons. So now you tell me that I need to pay for my device to access to the internet. I'm going to say no way that I will be paying for my device to access to the internet. And because of this, some smart developer start to develop their own communication network in the unlicensed band. LP1 such as Sigfox show that it is able to connect sensor and also a cheater to the internet without the use of Wi-Fi or cellular. The licensed cellular operator felt threatened. They still remember how WhatsApp take away their overseas call business and also SMS business. And because of this, the licensed cellular operator proposed LTE-M and also MBIoT to counter the unlicensed LP WAN. Something similar with LP WAN actually exists in the 90s. Okay, this company, AlarmNet, they actually built a 900 megahertz network to monitor alarm panel. And because of this, okay, the solar network operator realized that it could move data and as well as voice. And therefore, in the late 90s, 2G was born. Okay, after 2G was born, Alarm panel and similar system, they actually migrate to the cellular network in order to take advantage of the wide coverage. Coming closer, because now more and more devices are required to connect to the internet, okay, this led to the re-emerge of LP1 technology. Okay, Sigfox started up in 2009 and they built the first LP1 modem in France in 2012. And their hundred million dollar, okay, in fact, they have more than two hundred million dollar fund. Got everyone in the industry excited to use this LP WAN technologies. Today we have Sigbox, we have Laura Alliance, we have MBLT, and in fact, we have many many more. They are all creating this LP WAN technology for application like asset tracking, building management, smart city, smart agriculture, and many many more. Let's come to the present of LP WAN. Okay, so over here you can see that basically I separate this page into two sections. Okay, this part is basically all the unlicensed LP WAN. And on your right will be the licensed LP WAN. For the licensed LP WAN, we have MPLT and we also have this LTE-M. These two technologies are controlled by 3GPP and they use the license band to transmit. And hence, because of this, they are called the licensed LP WAN. On your left, basically consists of all the unlicensed LP WAN. Okay, because they use the unlicensed band to transmit, 
and hence therefore they are called unlicensed LP van. Over here you can see that mainly the two unlicensed LP van will be Sigfox and Laura. Okay. In fact, along the years, there are more and more unlicensed LP van that actually appeared okay, and they also command certain amount of market share. Okay, maybe I will do another video to describe all the unlicensed LP van and also the licensed LP van. Let's come to the future of LP van. Okay, there are several wireless connectivity options for Internet of Things. Okay, basically, we have Wi Fi and Bluetooth to Sigfox. We also have this LTE KM1 and also this RPMA. However, two of them are showing signs that they will dominate the market. Okay, this is to believe okay, quite a certain of survey, analyze, and they actually predict that MBLT and LoRaWAN will account for 87% of all LPWAN connection by 2028, which means that these two actually also eaten up the market share of Sigfox. These two wireless technology, they actually operate with more power efficient. It means that they actually extend their battery life and they are also able to work with a large number of connected devices over a wide area. One of the major risks to LPWAN are actually among themselves. Like what I mentioned earlier on, in LPWAN, there are actually two divisions. One group belongs to the licensed LPWAN, which we have MBLT and also LTE-M. And another group belongs to the unlicensed LPWAN, which we have LoRaWAN and also Sigfox. LTE-M and MBLT, they are actually from the cellular standard and they actually have the slight advantage as compared to the unlicensed LP van because they are being pushed by various industry okay for example Qualcomm and Nokia they are actually very keen to push MBLT and LTE-M beside so-called the equipment manufacturer okay the cellular service provider like AT&T and Verizon, they also will be very keen to upgrade their cellular software on their network and basically to deploy this kind of network, which is the MBLT and also LTE-M. Okay, by refarming, okay, refarming means that to make some changes on the 2G, okay, frequency for voice in use today and without need any additional hardware, which means that just a simple software upgrade for 2G, okay, you actually can support MBLT. And because of this, solar companies can actually serve the narrowband application. Next, the solar service provider, okay, they typically were very likely to market this LTE-M to large MNC companies who use their cellular for mobile data and also voice service. Okay, because those large companies, they actually pay, for example, they want to have video surveillance. Okay, they actually bought a huge amount of data. They also have some voice service to carry their so-called cellular service. And because of this, okay, the cell provider, they are actually picking up millions of dollars for handset contract. Okay, they have this opportunity to offer low-end data service for a very attractive price in order to have some market share. Okay, but this does not mean that company in the unlicensed LP1 space are doomed. Okay, it just means that they need to think ahead about new strategies. Ideally, they must try to provide more value than just transport of data. If LoRa Alliance members and also the customer of Sigfox can come up with very target application, they won't be displaced by LTE-M opportunity. Okay, so with this, okay, I'd like to end my discussion on the past, the present, and also the future of LP when. I hope this video gave you some insight okay, on LP when. With this, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.